Coraline has been officially dubbed into various languages, and each version brings its unique twist to the story. I've watched six adaptations of Coraline – German, Italian, Russian, Ukrainian, Spanish and English. In this video, we'll delve into the distinctions between these versions. And the thing that instantly comes to my mind is the movie's title, which varies in different countries. In the Russian and Ukrainian adaptations, it's titled Coraline in Nightmareland. It kinda seems like they wanted to remind people of Alice in Wonderland, to get more folks to see it in theaters. A particularly unusual case is the titles in China and Taiwan. In China, it's simply called The Strange Door, without Coraline in the title. However, in Taiwan, it's The Fourteenth Gate or The Fourteenth Door. Why did they do that? Well, it comes from the fact that Coraline counts doors in the story, and the one leading to the other world is the fourteenth door she encounters. It adds an interesting and amusing touch to the title, and the Japanese version is called Coraline and the Button Witch. Italy and Israel use Coraline and the Magical Door, while the Greek version is Coraline the House in the Mist. Sweden's take is Coraline and the Mirror Secret, which is interesting because Coraline finds ghost children behind the mirror. Now, here is something engaging about YB's name. In English, it's Yborn, which Coraline interprets as Why Were You Born, adding a layer of tragedy to his character. But in most versions, his name gets changed. The most dramatic difference is in the Russian version. In this adaptation, it's Zaki, and the full name is Zakilbury, whatever that is. The reason they changed it is to create their own interpretation of his name later, because here it's not possible to keep the original wordplay. In this version, Coraline later refers to him as Zekolibaika, which means something like an annoying boy, and this sounds similar to his name in the Russian adaptation, Zaki. I personally think that the Russian version of his name isn't as creepy as the Why Were You Born, and kinda worse. Zekolibaika. Why were you born? Also, it seems like the Spanish translators were too lazy even to try to make their own wordplay like the Russians. They just kept his name the same as in the English version, YB. However, in this case, Coraline doesn't interpret his name at all. She just says that he's annoying. Niño entrometido. In most versions, YB's name had some issues, and overall, it didn't sound as good as it did in English. Now let's move on. You'll remember the other father's song where he warns Coraline about other mother's intentions to replace Coraline's eyes with buttons. It's weird, but in every version I looked at, they removed this line. So the other father doesn't mention the button eyes in the song. Maybe the translators thought it wasn't that important to the story, so they cut it out to keep the lip syncing right. Now let's take a look at these lines in different languages. <laughs> As we know, Coraline at the beginning of the movie is portrayed as a grumpy child. But in the Italian version, Coraline comes across as even grumpier than the English adaptation. Also, she looks cranky in Italian, because she never uses the word please. She simply asks for things without any politeness. For example, in English, she says please. In contrast, in the Russian version, Coraline is more polite than any other adaptation. When she first meets new people, she uses the polite form of the word you. In the Russian language, like in Spanish, there are two ways to refer to someone – formal and informal. Interestingly, in the Russian version, when Coraline first meets the other mother, she refers to her in a formal way, signifying that Coraline sees the other mother as a stranger, but remains polite. At the same time, in the German, Ukrainian and Spanish versions, Coraline uses the casual, informal form of the word you, even though there's a formal way to say it in these languages. In many instances, the English version of Coraline has moments without words, while in other adaptations they add some words. 
For example, in this particular scene. Look, I'm from Pontiac. Huh? Michigan. Короче, я из Pontiac. Где это? Штат Мичиган. It's evident that the spoken words don't sync with YB's lip movements in the Russian version. The translators likely added these extra words to help the Russian audience understand what's happening, because most of them aren't familiar with American cities and related topics. Another example is when Corlin finds Bobinski's letters and notices they stink. In the original version, she simply makes noises to express her disgust. But in other adaptations, she just says what she feels. I don't know why exactly they added words here. Let's move on. In the garden, when Coraline sees her face made of flowers, her father says this sentence. Or she knows you like the back of her hand. However, in the German version, it was translated differently. Something like, she really knows you like her best bags. Junge, sie kennt dich wirklich wie ihre besten Taschen. Maybe the German translators intended to hint that the other mother is interested in fashion, but the reason for that is unclear to me, especially because there are other better ways to translate this line into German. Then, when Coraline speaks with her friends from the photo, one of them talks about Oregon, but in the German version this was changed to the sea. We're already here, Coraline. Gone to Oregon? Wir sind doch schon hier, Coraline. Mit Joche an der See. This change might have been made because Germans might not be familiar with Oregon, I'm not sure. Now, there's another exciting thing we got in the Ukrainian and Russian adaptations. There's a missed detail from the original. When the other mother asks Coraline to invite the other father to dinner, she says that he's as hungry as a pumpkin by now. I bet he's hungry as a pumpkin by now. This detail is important, because at the movie's end we see that he actually has become a pumpkin. However, in the Ukrainian adaptation, Beldum says he's as hungry as an umbrella, and in Russian as hungry as 100 ants. In contrast, in other dubs, the pumpkin reference was retained. There were many other small differences in all the versions, but I've highlighted the most interesting ones I could translate into English without losing their meaning. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, because I put a lot of effort into it, and your activity is the best reward. Thank you all for watching this video. See ya!